from appendix carry to strong side carry to the four or five o'clock position, from a single belt clip to a dual belt clip, from just a regular gun holster to linking it to your single mag pouch. Guys, in this video, we're gonna talk about the torsion. We're gonna take it out for a spin and tell you what's the best way to run it. Now the torsion gun holster is based off the DOS holster, our drop out of sight holster, which was launched almost nine years ago. And it served everyone from civilians to law enforcement, from plainclothes officers to FBI agents for almost a decade. Now, four years ago, we added the torsion technology, our patented torsion technology to the DOS holster, making it the torsion holster. And so it's integrated into the holster, allowing the gun to sit closer to the body for better concealment. Check out this video, Dan will link it here somewhere. Now I run my torsion gun holster with a single belt clip configuration. I've been running it for years. I mean, ever since the DOS came out. And I like it because I like running appendix and I like to nudge my gun holster over or my gun and my gun holster over when I have to sit down. I have no problems going and nudging my gun holster uh, just to make it more comfortable for myself. Again, because I'm wearing appendix or even if I'm wearing at the four or five o'clock position, I just like it. Now again, guys, I have no issues nudging my gun over if I have to sit down to be more comfortable. I know a lot of guys will say, hey, well, you're giving away your position or you're letting people know that you're carrying. Eh, to me, it doesn't really matter. Most people are stuck to their phones or they're busy with their families. Uh, you're not a prima donna. You don't attract everyone's attention when you walk into a room. So yeah, I'm okay with it. Now you can also run the dual belt clip configuration, which is the standard configuration. If you buy a gun holster, it's gonna come with both belt clips like this. This anchors the holster very well to your belt uh, and it's not gonna nudge on you back and forth. It's a really, really good way of carrying your gun if you really want it locked down solid, blah, blah, blah. Now this is great if you really want it to be rock solid on your belt, uh, if you're practicing your, your draws, if you're drawing your gun and you're reholstering, it's great for that. Uh, and also for concealed carry, obviously. Now you may say, well then why do you want to run it with a single belt clip if you're gonna have to be uh, reholstering your gun and it may shift on you? Look, I get it, but in real life, you're not gonna be drawing and reholstering your gun a lot. For the most part, you'll be drawing it once and hopefully you'll be reholstering it. Now this brings up a, an interesting point. Uh, make sure that when you're reholstering your gun, that you look down, take the time and reholster your gun carefully. A lot of things can go wrong if you're just trying to reholster very quickly. I know it's a cool thing and everything, but look guys, in real life, take your time, look down and reholster and be safe. Now, the reason I say this is because, you know, especially like in colder weather when people are carrying uh, outside the waistband or even inside the waistband, uh, you know, people run jackets and a lot of these jackets have these drawstrings, especially you find them on tactical jackets. Uh, they have these drawstrings with a little nub at the end and those can make their way into your holster. And so you don't want to be reholstering your gun into a holster with something in it because then you can get a negligent discharge and you don't want that. Now, a regular t-shirt can do that as well. A button t-shirt if you're using it to conceal your handgun or just a regular t-shirt if you're carrying appendix. It gets in there, cloth will get in there and you know, there can be some issues. So take the time to reholster your gun. Uh, whether you're at the range or in a real life situation where you have to use your gun, your stress level goes up. I mean, it, it's natural, it's gonna happen. And so when your stress levels go up, your fine motor skills, they're out the window and you go to gross motor skills. I get it, reholstering a gun is not a fine motor skill, but nonetheless, your stress levels are up, take the time to reholster your gun. All right guys, one more thing, I promise, just one more thing. If you have to reholster your gun, that means that the threat to yourself or the people around you is gone. So again, take a moment, look down, reholster your gun carefully. Now back to the torsion gun holster, the other thing you can do is you can adjust the ride height. So by moving these belt clips, you can adjust how high you want it to ride or how low you want it to ride. A lot of people, they don't like running their gun too high. You know, they want it very concealed, so they try to get that grip as close to the belt line as possible. Other people, they want a good perch when they're going for their gun, so they'll ride it high. So again, guys, definitely something that you can do on the torsion gun holster, adjusting the ride height to your holster and your gun. Now you can also cant your gun holster forward. Uh, this is done by moving this belt clip up and you can even drop this belt clip down to give it a more drastic cant. Uh, this is great if you're running it at the strong side or the four or five o'clock position uh, because obviously when you're going for your gun, uh, it's just the natural mechanics of the hand and just the way you reach down and grab your gun. If it leans forward a little bit, it's just a little bit easier to grab 
Also, it's better for concealment. It just hides up against your body. Uh, it works great, guys. Uh, yeah, you can definitely try that out as well. Now, contrary to many beliefs, the torsion gun holster is not an appendix carry gun holster. You can wear it pretty much anywhere around your waistline, except maybe your six o'clock, um, and it'll serve you well. It's a great gun holster uh, to run appendix, strong side, four or five o'clock position. Awesome, it works great. Now, I like to run my torsion gun holster appendix. If you guys know, if you guys follow us, if you guys follow me on Instagram or follow Bravo Concealment, you'll see that I'll show my daily EDC. And about 98% of the time, I'm running appendix. I'll run it four or five o'clock position, uh, usually on Sundays when I'm wearing an overcoat uh, to church. But as far as just your everyday carry, it's appendix. Now, if I know if I'm gonna be sitting down a lot, like right now, then I'd run it at the four or five o'clock position. If I'm gonna be with my family and uh, we're gonna have a dinner and we're gonna be there for a couple hours, uh, yeah, definitely go four or five o'clock position. I rarely run a strong side. I feel that the strong side of the body or the three o'clock position, there's a lot more curvature there on your waistline. And so I like to run it in more flatter areas, like again, uh, right above my pocket or appendix. Now, like I said, that's just my opinion. I'm not the end all know it all. Whatever works best for you guys, do it, man. Torsion gun holster will serve its needs. Your needs. The torsion gun holster will serve 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 your needs. Now, as you may know, the 3.0 holster offers a retention screw. Because of this, I get a lot of questions or I get DMs, people DMing me and asking me, well, how much retention should the torsion gun holster have? Well, I like to run mine with very little retention. You know, at the end of the day, I don't wanna be drawing my gun and give myself a pant wedgie. And because I run single belt clip configuration, well, you don't wanna to put too much retention on a belt clip like this uh, because it, uh, mm, eh, and because I like running the single belt clip configuration, you don't wanna to put too much retention on the holster because when you're drawing the gun, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on this stem right here. So if you run a Kung Fu grip type retention on your holster, uh, it's not gonna be good. All right, so the best way to test proper retention on your inside the waistband holster is to turn it upside down and shake it vigorously to see if the gun doesn't come out. I'm not gonna do that because it will come out. And I'm not gonna damage my gun just to make a point. Now again, unless you wanna give yourself a pant wedgie, the, the holster doesn't need a whole lot of retention. It doesn't need any retention, is that what you're saying? No, it needs some form of retention. Obviously, you're running a gun in a holster, it's inside your pants. If you've got the belt on there, that's also creating some form of retention. And guys, look, as long as you can run it doing semi-active everyday things, you're gonna be okay. Now I get it though, you may never know when you're gonna find yourself having to wrestle two guys off you. I get, that doesn't sound right. I get it though, you may never know when you'll find yourself having to wrestle two bad guys off you with no backup, I understand. But, you know, there's also uh, weapon retention classes or courses that you can take. So if you're running inside the waistband or outside the waistband, that's definitely a good idea as well. This is simply my opinion though. Please use proper retention. Only you know your surroundings and only you know what type of retention you need. Please use good judgment when you're carrying your gun. Now, one thing that people started doing on their own, it was that our torsion gun holster wasn't designed that way or anything like that. People started linking their mag pouches to the torsion gun holster. I remember seeing it done, I think it was like two, three years ago on Instagram and I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. And it just started catching on. Well, it got so popular that people started calling the office asking how to link their single mag pouch to the torsion gun holster. So we actually had to make a video. Uh, Dan will post it here somewhere. There'll be a link. Go check it out. It's called the linked uh, video or something like that. Uh, we'll link it here. We'll link the linked. Go check it out, it's a good video. Now people have asked us that maybe we should design a mag pouch that is proprietary to the linked uh, holster. And so we've been thinking about that and I think we're gonna do that. So that's gonna be cool. But again, uh, it wasn't designed for this, but it definitely works. Uh, that's the way I run my Glock 43. If I know I'm gonna be sitting down a lot, my 43X, uh, I have it linked to the single mag pouch and it works awesome. It's a smaller gun. It's kind of like, it's a micro compact and uh, you know, 
with the extended magazine, it works great and it works really good as a linked gun holster. Now I run the Glock 19 as well and it works good too. All right guys, that pretty much covers everything guys. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, go follow us on Instagram, shoot me a DM, pick up the phone, call us, shoot us an email. Thank you so much for your time. Go check out Bravo Consumer for everyday concealed carry needs. Always awesome deals every single day. Do yourselves a favor, guys. Go check it out. Go follow us on all our social media platforms. Again, shoot me a DM on Instagram. Thanks for your time. We'll talk to you guys soon.